ABS it is. After nearly a year working with the injection molder, which is, well, I'll get into that at the end, we finally have what is nearly the, the finished version. There's just one final thing they need to fix, which they should be able to do just by switching machines. So let's take a look at what it took to get here. Uh, since the version that uh, we used, that was done with nylon. To refresh your memory, the nylon version had an issue with being hydroscopic, which means that it would absorb water. And as a result of absorbing water, it would change its dimensions. And so we got uh, quite a difference in dimensions, uh, depending on which part of the country, and the humidity. We decided we wanted to go to ABS, but we didn't want to go to the expense of having to create a new mold. So we thought we'd see if we could use the existing mold and switch to ABS. So let's take a look at how that turned out. After receiving uh, one of the ABS cases, there were several things we needed to make sure would fit. You know, one was the circuit board. That's easy to deal with. I just filed an oval, but for the final circuit boards, we just changed that to an oval shape in the circuit board itself. There was also the question of how the keypad would fit. So I put the keypad in here, uh, in the back, and you can see that there are these holes here, that there are bosses that uh, fit into the keypad. So when I turn it over, the question is whether or not we're going to see a gap that's really uh, obvious and noticeable. And I need to put the circuit board in to look. And you can see, if you look carefully, you can see that the gap is a little bit bigger here and here. So that means the keyboard is not a perfect fit, but you have to really look for that. And so, you know, we all decided that uh, this was acceptable because it allowed us to have the ABS, which was the, the most important thing to us. Next is the battery door. And if you notice here, the click is really weak. And the other thing is that battery door moves around a lot. So we need to make this a lot tighter and uh, increase the force of the click. There are two small screws near the screen, and one of the things that we noticed is that we only get about one turn engagement, which is not as much as we would like. So let's take a look at why that's the case and what we can do about it. The four larger screws have a lot more engagement because the bosses, as you can see here, go all the way through the circuit board. I couldn't do that for the two smaller screws because, as you can see here, the screen limits the size of the holes. This uh, picture here shows what the issue is, which is, I made a mistake. I did not know that screws have a dimension, which is the maximum dimension. So I specified half inch screws. I figured there was some tolerance and I left a little bit of a gap between the bottom of this hole and the bottom of the screw. Now, it turns out these screws are actually a little bit shorter than the half inch. So that means we're getting even less engagement than I thought we were going to get. What we decided to do is to increase this, to move this surface here down by 0.1 inches and then use a longer screw. And that will allow us to get more engagement. At this point, we provided this feedback to the injection molder. Now, one of the things that has been frustrating about this project is every time we have some corrections we need them to make to the mold, they put us at the end of the queue. And that means that we have to wait for typically a month to a month and a half for them to actually make the changes, even if the changes don't very, take very long to make. And this has really slowed down the project because it does take some tweaking to get things right. Some of the mistakes have been theirs, some of the mistakes have been ours. But as I say, every tweak takes uh, typically a month and a half to two months. We recently got back in version two of the ABS cases. As you can see, the uh, back of the case has been polished. TCS wanted this to be a smooth case because um, the smooth case has better grip on your hand than the textured case, so this is less likely to slip. The more important thing, though, is the battery door, as you can see, has a really nice click to it and has a very good uh, fit. We also got this lanyard cover and this is the first time uh, we had gotten it but as you can see it fits nicely into here and stays in place which is the thing that's important 
So we finally have samples that have corrected everything and are set to go into production. Now, that's the other interesting thing, which is now that we said we're ready to have this go, to go into production, they put us at the end of the queue again. So it's going to be about a month and a half or so before we get final parts. After assembly, we noticed one final issue, which is the flashing along here. What they're going to do is try to use a larger machine with more clamping force to see if that fixes it. So this has been a much longer process than we expected it to be. And if we're going to use the same injection molder in the future, we definitely need to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with them about how long it takes them to do revisions, because having to wait a month and a half to two months in between revisions has just killed the timeline for this project. At least it's finally done. And we're really happy with the results. We're just not happy with what it took to get there. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please help me grow the channel by subscribing, giving me a thumbs up, commenting below, and if you have subscribed already, you might want to click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to ensure you're notified when I have a new video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.